Hey guys, it's Patrick. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your turnovers whenever sending to color and to audio. The first thing we're going to do is duplicate our project. Once we've duplicated our project, we'll add the suffix underscore turnover prep. Not turnover prop. I mean, you know, it could be a prop if we were making a movie about timelines, I suppose. In this turnover prep project, we're going to uh, simplify the timeline as much as possible so that when we do our turnovers to Resolve and to Pro Tools, they're as clean as possible. So there are a few things to keep in mind. First, if you have any connected clips that are hovering above the timeline that don't actually need to be connected clips, it's a good idea to move those to the primary storyline so that Resolve has a single track of video to work with. When you're working with multiple tracks of video inside of Resolve, it gets a little bit more complicated. So it's best to leave only clips that are being composited over other clips in the secondary storyline or uh, outside of the primary storyline in general. So for example, this clip is actually being composited over another clip, so we can't really do much with that. Same with this clip here and with this clip here. So in this case, we've got this clip of the little girl and the clip of the boats, and both of those need to be moved into the primary storyline. So to do that, we'll press Command, Option, and Down on the keyboard, and that will move those straight away into the primary storyline. We also need to make sure that if we have any auditions, that those are finalized because uh, Resolve doesn't deal with auditions very well, nor does Pro Tools. So we're going to open up the Timeline Index and we're going to search the word Audition. Uh, we can now select these three auditions here and I'm going to press Command 2 to make the timeline active. I'm going to do Y to open one of the auditions, and then I'm going to do Option Shift Y to finalize all three auditions at once. If you don't open one of the auditions, you will actually run into an error. So let's back up for just a second. We've got our three auditions, and again, I'm going to just do Option Shift Y to finalize, and as you can hear, I'm getting an error. However, if I open one by pressing Y, and then <laughs> you see, we've got this fun little floaty panel. Uh, and then I do Option Shift Y. I've now finalized those auditions. It's also a good idea to break apart any compound clips. Resolve can work with compound clips, but it's unreliable at this point. So we're going to look up any compound clips and we'll select those. And I'm going to do Command Shift G to break apart clip items. And you'll notice that when I did that, um, I'm just going to undo real quick. You'll see that this clip right here expanded. Uh, we ended up with another layer, and uh, in this particular case, that shot is being composited, so we cannot move it to the primary storyline. Some other things that we're going to want to do for uh, later on, we're going to export a reference movie of our timeline so that Resolve and Pro Tools, they'll have a picture locked version of the cut to conform to and to make sure that uh, everything's aligned just perfectly, we need a reference movie. So we'll create a new master file and it doesn't really need to be all that big. In fact, we can do ProRes Proxy or even H.264, but so that it plays back easily in both applications, we'll just do a ProRes Proxy. And in this case, I'm just going to make that on the desktop. We'll hit save. Next step, we want to separate all of the audio from the video so that we can delete all of the video for our audio turnover and so that we can delete all of the audio for our video turnover. This makes both of those turnovers much cleaner. So what we'll do is we'll go to video in the timeline index and I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to open up both video roles and audio roles. All right, so we'll see that there are some clips that have both video and audio roles. What we'll do is we'll go through and select those. So we'll hold down Command to select multiples at a time. Storylines aren't going to really count because they aren't a clip. So anything that does have a video role and an audio role, we're going to select. We'll do Command 2 to make the timeline active. And we'll do Control Shift S to detach audio. Now that we've detached all of our audio and simplified our timeline, we can go ahead and duplicate our prep project. And we will now duplicate it twice, actually. We'll do one for, we'll just do turnover color, and we'll duplicate that. And we'll do turnover 
audio. Now in the turn over to audio, things are fairly straightforward. I'm simply going to find all of my video clips and I'm going to uh, select all in the timeline index and I'm going to do shift delete. That way I don't lose timing for anything. You'll see that I've also got a few titles that are left over. I want to make sure to get rid of those as well. So we'll do shift delete and I've got some transitions. We'll just do a lasso around, do one last shift delete. Now we've got gap and just our audio and we can in fact create our XML. So we'll export XML and let's make a fun little folder for um, turnovers here on the desktop and we'll hit save. For our color turnover, there are a few things that we need to make sure of. Uh, first of all, uh, our titles may or may not come over in Resolve quite the way we want them to. So it's always good to export your titles and cut them back in. An easy way to do this is to simply export your entire timeline. In fact, you can go export master file. If you go to settings, you can switch from proxy to either ProRes 444 or ProRes 444XQ to make sure that you're keeping the alpha channel. And then you'll do roles as video only as separate files. And once we do that, we can actually remove video. And in this case, I've got titles and subtitles that I want to export. And those will export as separate files, which is kind of fun. So I'll hit next. And we'll do a folder for titles. And we'll do crazy one ones. Titles. And we'll hit save. All right, so in the background, Final Cut is now going to export those titles for us. And here in a second, we'll cut those back in. All right, let's show. We can bring those titles in very quickly and easily. And you'll see that it's one big file at this point. We can actually trim it down so that it's not going out so far. Our subtitles kind of end around here. All right. Now we've got versions of the titles. In fact, I can come through and delete those versions of the titles. And you'll see that we still have our titles baked in in such a way that they will be easily accessible to our colorist. I'll just do a little chopping up here. Got a big section of black. We'll remove that. All right. Isn't it enough? Subtitles. Title at the end. Beautiful. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to do is if you've got any clips that have any effects on them, for example, this has got a speed ramp on it. Um, we've got clips down the line over here that have the Alex 4D grow shrink effect. For those clips, you will also want to export those and cut them back in. So for example, I'll turn this plate off and if I hit X on the keyboard, I can select a range and then I can export a master file of each of those files. And then I will want to cut those back in before I do my uh, final turnover to resolve. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to delete all of the audio just to make sure that our turnover is nice and clean. In the timeline index, hit command A to select all of the audio and we'll hit delete. File, export XML. And we'll hit save. And off to the races we go. We'll launch our project. We'll do file, import, open, we'll hit OK. And yeah, we'll give it another folder to check out. All right. So now we've got our project inside of Resolve. There are a few issues with some of the composites. For example, the masking went away. So we'll either have to remask those or again, we can go back into Final Cut and export a version with the masks and then just cut those back in. So that's the turnover to Resolve. For the audio, we're going to use X2 Pro Audio Convert. We'll hit Browse. We'll go to our audio turnover XML. We'll hit OK. 
and you'll see that I've got all the various roles for my audio here in this little panel. And if I wanted to, I could um, usually they like D, M, and E, so dialogue, music, and effects. So I'm going to move my voice over up to the top along with this dialogue role. And I'm going to move effects to the bottom with three timed effects. And then I've got uh, music needs to come down below my archival audio because archival audio is another kind of dialogue. So we've got our dialogue, our music, and our effects here at the bottom. Uh, we also need to select a destination. In this case, we'll do desktop and we'll do doc a a f. Hit create. We'll select folder and we'll hit start. And X2 Pro will very quickly generate an AAF for us. And it'll give us a list of things that didn't come through. You'll see a bunch of the sound effects that I used, including a uh, space designer, a compressor, and some EQ did not pass through, and that's quite normal. So let's open up Logic in this case. And this works just as well for Pro Tools. We'll open an empty project, and we'll just create one audio track for its own sake. And then import AAF, and we'll go to the desktop, Go to our doc AAF, select our AAF, hit import. And yes, we do want to change the project sample rate to match that of the AAF. And remember at the beginning, we created a reference movie. So now that we've got all of our audio here inside of Logic, and you'll see it's organized by the roles that we'd set, voiceover, dialogue, archival audio, and then all of my effects are down here. So now I can add that reference movie so that we can edit using that. We'll open movie and we will browse to our reference movie. We'll hit open. We don't need to extract the audio in this particular case. We'll use 23976 and check this out. It isn't enough. All right. Very cool. So that's turnovers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, this is Patrick from Lumaforge signing off.